So the water's here. The people are proposing to solve all of the world's water problems with some digital CGI mushrooms. Digital mushrooms, which it must be said, they've raised over $200,000 for. Hell, I mean, at least in Star Wars, they built models for their uh, moisture farmers. Anyway, the creators of the digital mushrooms have responded to my video completely debunking the very principle on which this device is meant to function. We invite scientific and technical scrutiny. We are getting better by examining and improving our ideas. In fact, we founded VC Labs to accelerate ideas from vision to value. Hmm, something tells me that they're not going to be best pleased about my little video that shows how their sappy, manipulative Indiegogo campaign is complete and utter bullshit. After walking for hours along remote trails, they fill their containers with 40 pounds of water and carry it back to their village along the same dangerous track, often with young children in tow. Every day, more than 18,000 people die from a lack of safe drinking water. Because the sides of the underground chamber are always cooler than the air, Waterseer is always collecting water, day and night. The technical aspects of the video show how water see it can work, not how it can't. Anyone who sees water condense on a cold glass or runs an air conditioner knows how this works and how water comes out of the air. When you see something working, you don't deny it because it doesn't fit your understanding of the theory. Facts are stubborn things. Seriously, seriously, your response to the cold, hard numbers that show your device cannot function as promised, even under ideal circumstances, let alone in the desert where it's likely that the device will never function at all. You know, no matter if there's one, ten or a hundred of them, that all means nothing because you've seen a few drops of water condense on the side of a cold glass. Okay, well, I'll play ball. I'm going to take a glass with about 100 grams of ice in it, and I'm going to add some water to that so the whole thing's more or less at freezing point. Much colder than the proposed soil you're going to use to get the water out of the air in your water seer. The humidity was just 50%, because that's just what it was on the day. The glass, the ice, and the water weigh a total of about 416 grams. Well, let's see how much water condenses on the glass, shall we? And it's about one gram. One gram of water condensed on the side of that glass for 100 grams of ice. Now, that lack of condensation is no surprise when you understand that under perfect conditions, a kilogram of ice, uh, 1,000 grams of ice, will condense only about 150 grams of water. Or to put it another way, under optimal conditions, your water seer to get its 40 or so litres of water that you want per day. Under optimal conditions, a single water seer may collect as much as 37 litres of clean, fresh water every day. Would need to melt about a quarter of a tonne of ice every single day. I mean, this isn't rocket science. This isn't university level science. Hell, this is more like science fair level stuff. The attacks on the National Peace Corps Association, UC Berkeley, the Sutaja Center for Entrepreneurship and Technology, and the Jacobs Institute for Design and Innovation are inappropriate, unprofessional, and unfair. <laughs> I think I might have touched a bit of a nerve here. Um, but far be it from me to judge. But if I were throwing around terms like unprofessional, it would be for one of the world's top 15 universities promoting something that could be shown to be bullshit by a science fair type experiment. And if I were throwing around terms like inappropriate, it would be for smearing a top university's name all over your project to give it the veneer of credibility. And if I were to throw around terms like unfair, it would be for putting out a, but won't somebody think about the children type video to promote pseudoscientific bullshit. Anyway, Waters here continues, talking about UC Berkeley and the such like. I am confident that their reputation for excellence and working for the public good can withstand any examination. Hmm, I'm not too sure about that. The numbers seem pretty straightforward to me. Oh, what's that I hear you say? 
University of California, Berkeley have added a disclaimer to their waters here page. Disclaimer, Sutaja Center Collider projects are academic exercises executed with the goal of helping students gain experience with real world industry problems. The Sutaja Center, Berkeley Engineering and UC Regents do not necessarily claim to support the efficacy or claims made by any industrial partner of their projects. Under optimal conditions, a single water seer may collect as much as 37 litres of clean, fresh water every day. Which were worked on for this programme. Not that they should need to add such a disclaimer the very day after I made my video. As well I might, to have one of the world's top universities backing a project that could have been busted for a high school science fair project. Yeah, I would imagine that it is going to be a jagged little pill for them to swallow. And hell yeah, they deserve it. It's hard enough to counter the pseudoscience pimped by snake oil salesmen without having to do it for some of the world's top universities. But more realistically, UC Berkeley are probably more worried about getting their asses sued. After all, as much as I disapprove of this sort of thing, this has nuisance lawsuit written all over it. UC Berkeley has deep pockets and it's clear that they've promoted something that is a complete non-starter. And my reckoning is UC Berkeley would be far more likely to settle such a nuisance lawsuit rather than deal with the humiliation of getting sued for something that can be shown to be complete bullshit by something that would be more at place in a science fair. Oh, and dear God, the amount that you smear Berkeley's name all over your web page. Yeah, I can see why they would want to put some plausible deniability between you and them. Although honestly, I'm not so sure that's going to help them much. I mean, before all of this, Berkeley were quite happily promoting this stuff all over the place, leading to the water lily, which is basically a Peltier cooler and a solar panel. We all wanted to make a difference to someone else's life. I mean, that's why we're all engineers. The, the umbrella and stem design was inspired by nature. Uh, we took a look at like uh, a lily pad actually, um, hence our name Hydra Lily. We hope Hydra Lily inspires future generations of artists and engineers to really go out there and be inspired by the littlest things and create devices that otherwise wouldn't have existed. And Hydra Lily is an atmospheric water generation device. It effectively generates drinking water uh, from thin air to be used in situations where uh, drinking water is not as readily accessible. Ha! Huh. Maybe they should have watched the video I made on this about how for every liter that you could get off a Peltier type device, you could purify about one ton of water by reverse osmosis. Or looked at another way, you could use that 1.7 or so kilowatt hours that you use to condense that 0.7 liters of water and use it to run a reverse osmosis kit, which could purify about 500 kilograms, half a ton of water. I don't think it's just for engineering students. I think everyone should study art. Why is that? To make the world more beautiful. Shh, they're designers. So I'm sure the poor children dying of thirst would far rather have one kilogram of stylishly produced water rather than a ton from some simple, inelegant engineering device. Anyway, back to Watersea's response. They, that would be Berkeley and the such like, are certainly more credible as individuals and as institutions than the producers of this attack video. Well, firstly, I'm flattered that you think there's more than one of me, you know, the producers of the video. Nope, just one of me, just one guy. I do the calculations, I do all the background reading, I write the scripts, and I make the videos. Yeah, but yeah, let's ignore all the arguments that show the device is complete bullshit from start to finish because Berkeley is more credible than some guy on the internet. Hmm, let me just let you know a little secret here. I like being some random guy on the internet, some faceless guy. But let's just do a little bunny head count here, shall we? I call bullshit on NASA's claims about arsenic-based life. You know, before they retracted them because they were all bullshit. Get in the headshots. It's like, oh, I was the one who tried to explain to the University of Nottingham multiple times that the arguments that they were putting out about the alkali metal reaction rates with water were fundamentally flawed. 
reaction with water which removes an electron from the cesium atom is much easier because it needs less energy. So if there's less energy needed to remove the electron from the cesium, then there's more energy left to release as heat. Because the thermodynamics of these systems are known, and it's not a satisfactory explanation for the observations here. Indeed, I even wrote Polyakov telling him that the thermodynamic argument was not the right explanation. You know, if only they bothered to think about it. And they just blew me off as some guy on the internet. But some of them make points which are quite difficult to explain why they're wrong without pages of explanation. I mean, this stuff's in all the textbooks. What's the chances of some guy on the internet being right about it? Let alone predict the exact experiment that they would need to do to figure out what was actually going on. Look, I'm looking at 300 frames per second here, and one frame is there, and the next it's gone. But from this, I can estimate that you would need something in the order of 10,000 frames per second to have a good chance of seeing what's going on here. So if the Nottingham boys drop the resolution on their camera, jack up the frame rate, pour on the light, I think that the camera that they've got is actually capable of determining whether this is the correct mechanism or not. <laughs> you know what, listen to some guy on the internet suggesting, what was it? up close and 10,000 frames per second. However, some co-workers and I thought this might be worth doing. Uh, guess what? Close up and 10,000 frames per second. The results are impressive. Here, filmed at 10,000 frames per second, that's one tenth of a millisecond per frame. And guess what? We found out why it was really exploding and got it published in one of the world's top journals. <laughs> Oh God, and it just goes on and on. I call the Triton Lung as bullshit. Boom, Solar roadway. Boom, Plastic from the air. Boom, call why the Falcon 9 exploded before it was announced. Oh, and of course, the self-filling water bottle. Boom, yeah, amateur, but rarely to people who don't deserve it. Help us if you just think of me as a predator of the predators. Honestly, with a track record like that, hoping that I screwed up the science fair level type calculations that neither you nor Berkeley bothered to do is kind of optimistic. I mean, call Berkeley's name all you want. It won't change the numbers. In fact, from what I hear, Berkeley's got problems of its own with the college students demanding segregation. Yes, they genuinely and unironically had a sign that says, Fight for Spaces of Colour. And having protests where only people of colour are allowed through and white people are not. Ironic, isn't it? It took Eisenhower ordering the 101st Airborne to keep law and order and to help end segregation. A solid step towards fulfilling Martin Luther King's dream. Because I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin. Skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream. And now you have colored students protesting for the exact opposite, where everyone should be judged by the color of their skin and not the content of their character. at one of America's top universities. Viki Labs, T3 Tiger Tech, and the people who work in them have a public record. In any case, we stand behind our work and our goals to make the world better by daring greatly and doing things differently. That's why Watersea is a not-for-profit initiative. 
and all the funds go to refining the design, expanding field testing, manufacturing. <laughs> That's going to be interesting, seeing as they've not even made a prototype yet. And development to support the water suit community, early adopters, and all of our contributors. The ultimate proof of water seer will be in its performance in daily life. Yes, I can see how you exude wanting to make the world a better place. A machine which you haven't even yet worked out cannot work. But miraculously, you know to the dollar how much that machine will cost to make. Seems to be some odd complaints on their Facebook though, how you took their money but no phone number or address. Might make delivery of the product kinda tricky. Eh, details. I'm, I'm sure your Facebook is just about to put up how you expect to achieve the thermodynamically impossible. Personal attacks, particularly on the engineering and design students, is reprehensible in the extreme. It's shameful, particularly when done for entertainment purposes, which appears to have been its intention. You have got to be shitting me. Seriously, you promote a video where you parade around those exact students. You promote them saying dumb stuff to promote your product. And then when I call them on the dumb stuff they're saying, you use those exact same students as a human shield. And done for entertainment purposes. Uh, nah. This was done because I have an intrinsic disdain of someone raising over $200,000 for a machine that cannot work. And in the process, you've undermined the credibility of real scientists, as well as taking that $200,000 away from where it could have done some real good to help people without water in the third world. And at the risk of sounding like a jerk, yeah, when it's done flawlessly and ruthlessly in a, such a simple ballet of easily comprehensible numbers, yeah, you're goddamn right, it's entertaining. We invite you to join us and join the Water Seer community. Perhaps the resources, time and effort developing the attack video could have been spent trying to solve problems or working to improve the concept. Water access is a daunting worldwide challenge. It is expanding as populations grow, pollutants spread, aquifers run dry. Fill their containers with 40 pounds of water and carry it back to their village along the same dangerous track often with young children in tow. And the climate changes. Let's work to solve the problem. Dude, you cannot solve the thermodynamics. You want to get one kilo, one liter of water out of the air. You have to dissipate 2000 kilojoules of energy. It's that simple. It's conservation of energy stuff. That's why it was so trivial. Trivial to show that your entire project was bullshit.